Hello everyone, my name is Mike, also known as Flyfisher530. Today we're going to be going over this X-Ventures diesel heater. This is something I plan to use in my uh, rooftop tent this coming winter. And um, it was lent to me by a good friend of mine. It's never been opened or used or assembled. So that's exactly what we're going to do today is put this thing together. And uh, so I hope you enjoy the video. Stay tuned. Okay, so now that we have the, the unit open, this is everything that was basically stuffed inside here. And it is quite a tight fit, I have to say. Um, it'll be interesting to see when I get it all assembled how easy it is to get everything back inside here. Um, but it did fit, it all did fit, and um, there may be some things you, you won't need in the future and make it a little easier to put it back together. One of which I would say would be one of the things that's in here is a um, basically a battery connector. Um, so on the controller itself, this is the cable that will go to your 12 volt plug, whether it's your vehicle or your external battery. And then the other end of that attaches to the plastic case itself, connection point in the plastic case. And then um, what you can do if you had a, a, a regular battery that you want to connect it to, you could use this one here and it will connect to battery clips. So if you want to power your unit that way, you could do it. Uh, we won't be doing that uh, today. That's not the way I want to set this up. But if you want to do it that way, you could. So um, the other connection point on this, on this uh, harness is for the controller. And this controller um, will basically be what you use to power it on and off, um, turn the temperature up or down, that sort of thing. And you'll be able to run this wire up into the tent uh, that you're in and be able to remotely power this unit, which will be sitting outside your tent, which I guess should be the main point. You would not want this inside a tent. It is an exhausting CO2, carbon monoxide. So that is not something you want anywhere inside a, a tented or any sort of enclosed space. This needs to be set up outside your vehicle, outside your tent, and uh, used externally. And then the vent is brought with hot air into your tent, which is just that, just hot air. It's not um, any sort of exhaust product. So, um, so yeah, you have your controller here. Uh, you have a little uh, exhaust system, a muffler system for the, uh, the unit, and then you have some uh, connection points for your vents. Um, I think this is probably connecting to the case itself, and that's the uh, outlet side that goes inside the tent. There's an interesting thing here. This is a little splitter, and I'm not exactly sure why they include this, other than if you want it to heat up two different sources. Um, so I'll have to see what the deal is with that. I guess. If you want to have one vent go maybe inside your vehicle, another one go up inside your tent above the vehicle, if you had people sleeping in different spaces, um, it's the only reason I think why you'd have that. I'm not real sure. We'll, we'll figure that out as we go along. Um, then we have clamps that will allow us to uh, clamp these connection pieces onto the vent itself. And then there's also a little remote that comes with this as well, which is kind of cool. So you can either control this thing from a little remote fob, key fob style thing, or from the, uh, the panel itself. Um, you have two different options there. And then the last thing in here is a little um, a manual for the, the heater itself. And uh, I have to say this heater that's on the manual looks nothing like the heater that's in here. So um, anyway, hopefully that gets us through to get this thing started up. Um, so the next thing I think we'll do is we'll just start assembling these pieces and uh, trying to get this thing going. Okay, so the first thing I realized, uh, guys, was this little T-shaped piece here that was separate from the vent face piece uh, just need to be snapped together. Real easy to do, no big deal. They just basically snap together. Now we're gonna put it on the uh, one end of the vent here. I think it'd be easier if we get a bracket on there first, a clamp, hose clamp. And uh, so we'll try to get this on here. Okay, so the clamp is on and uh, we'll just tighten the clamp up. Okay, so the clamp's on, nice and tight. So that's that part of it. Okay, so the second part here is to get the, uh, the other end of this unit. I've got the clamp around it uh, onto the uh, exhaust, not the exhaust, the uh, heat output side of the, uh, the unit. So I'm just gonna try to feed this over this thing. There it goes. All right, 
get the clamp around it. Let's see if we got it. Yeah, it's, I want to make sure it's nice and flush against the sides there. Okay. All right. So we've got now the, the uh, vent side, the heated air side connected up. Um, so now let's see. Now I think we'll try to get the exhaust on um, with the little muffler unit attached and then we'll hook up the uh, the electrical side of this and uh, we'll just do a a quick setup outside without the tent or anything right now. I just want to see if I can get this unit started up and working. Um, and then if that looks all good, then we'll get the, uh, the thing set up in the tent. So, all right guys, so I got the muffler unit on here. Um, it's an extremely tight fit between these two pieces and they're almost the same diameter. Thankfully, this piece here, the actual flexible piece is fairly bendable. So I just took a pair of, of needle nose pliers and uh, you know, just took a pair of needle nose pliers and basically bent around the rim of these two pieces so that they could fit over the other piece. And they do fit together pretty nice and tight, which is nice. I'd rather have it tight than, uh, than loose. So uh, the muffler unit's now on, the um, vent is on. All we need to do now is do the electrical hookup. And so I'll show you that guys next. Okay, so we have the unit turned around and uh, now you can see the side that this electrical harness will connect into. This actually, I realize, is the air intake here. And um, so this harness basically just connects in. It has uh, some pins that guide it in. And then once it's in, you turn it to the right and you hear it click. You know it's solidly in there. To take it out, you just pull this pin back, rotate it back the other way, and it comes out. Pretty easy. has a nice solid feel to it when it clicks in. So now on the harness, all we need to do is plug it into a 12 volt source and then we'll connect up also the uh, controller. So those are just gonna go together like this. So that's hooked in. Yeah, so now I'm gonna take this outside. I'll uh, get my lithium 1200 uh, external battery. We'll see if we can get this thing started. All right, guys, so um, it's the next day. We've got the rain day here, it looks like, where I live. And um, so I've got it set up to start up. Um, just a couple things to note. This is a lithium 1200 watt hour battery. Um, I've already seen, I'm just trying to start it, that the, uh, the system, the battery was shutting off. And it's because as this thing starts up, it's drawing more than 10 amps. So, um, that's one thing you need to keep in mind that most cigarette lighter type um, round um, 12 volt outlets have a 10 amp maximum fuse on them. And these uh, external batteries are no different. Um, this one definitely is shutting off every time this thing tries to start up. So what I had to do was I have a, a, a AC to DC converter that has more amperage available and uh, this can go up to 30 amps. This is actually used for my ham radio setup. Um, if I can get this working today, I'll show you a, a cheaper, um, more compact option you can get on Amazon um, <clears throat> where it will convert uh, AC voltage to DC voltage at higher amperage. Um, I think the one I saw was 15 amps, which should be more than enough to start this up. Um, but just for today, I'm using this as kind of an example that, um, hey, even though um, they may say they draw no more than 10 amps, don't always count on that because it's, it's definitely drawing more than 10 amps for this particular unit. So <clears throat> um, you're going to need probably some sort of AC to DC converter that the DC amperage is higher than 10 amps um, for the initial startup. I'm sure after that it, it drops down, but on, on startup, I think you're going to need something a bit more than... A cigarette lighter or an external battery um, with a 10 amp maximum draw. All right, so I'm going to zoom in here so and just talk over you know what's going on here today. So hopefully you can see this better because with the brightness in the background, I don't think the video is going to be too good here. Um, but so again, just to overview, um, I've got fuel in the back of this thing. There's a little um, you've seen in the video. There's a canister in the back. It's got uh, diesel fuel in it. This is the heater hose here. This is my AC to DC uh, converter that's going to allow more than 10 amps to be drawn. 
that comes into this cable here, the power cable. So that's what that's going to help with. Um, I've got the controller here, and uh, I've got a light on in here. It should be smoking a bit at the start um, as, it, as it burns off the oils and things. So we're going to give it a shot here, and uh, I'll do a, a little more close-up so you guys can hopefully see what's going on. feeling uh, this is gonna have to be done over and over again until the uh, the fuel is gonna be in the because uh... I can clearly see there's no fuel in the fuel filter yet still no fuel in the fuel filter oh I can see a little bit starting to come in now fuel filter does have a little bit in there I think I can see a little bit going up the uh, line now. All right, we'll just give it a shot here. Let's hit the start button. There we go, starting to pump fuel in. Trying 135 watts. Trying 146 watts now. Okay, I turned it up from H3 to H5. getting 157, 160 degrees. Okay, I'm going to 
turn it back down to three. Still quite warm on three, I have to say. Pretty amazing. Pretty hot air coming out on setting three. It looks to me, it looks to me as though all the uh, oils have burned off. I don't really see anything smoking anymore. It's only drawing uh, 25 watts now. Well, I, have to, I have to say, guys, this thing's been running great. Um, been at least 15 minutes now and uh, no issues. And I don't see any really smoke coming off anymore. I think I'm going to let it go a few more minutes and then we're going to, uh, I'm going to close it up, put the muffler on and see if it's any quieter and maybe put it down on the lowest setting because you, I don't think you need that much heat all night long. So we'll, we'll set it down to, crank it down to number one here. Okay guys, one of the keys I think to a successful startup of this system the first time is to keep in mind you do need to prime the fuel pump and that's gonna take multiple pressings of this up and down um, until you see fuel get into the fuel filter and, and come into this area here. So it's not only start to come in but actually fill up the fuel filter to the point where you're into this area. I think that's about when you wanna stop priming and I think if you saw in the video, I, I probably did that five or six times at least um, to get fuel, at least in this area. And then I think you want to stop. You don't want to uh, go much further than that because you can, I think, flood this system. So after you see fuel in here, even if there's some fuel, air bubbles in there, don't worry about it. Go ahead and hit the start button and see if it, uh, it starts the system up. That's what I did this time. It worked great. Um, but just an FYI, if you're doing this yourself, uh, something to consider, because I, I do know you can flood these systems if you put if you prime it too much before trying to start it. Okay, guys, as you can see, I've shut the box now. Hopefully it makes it a little quieter as well as put on this exhaust system with a, what looks like a little muffler. Um, we'll see if that's much quieter. Um, it's already primed, so I'm not gonna try priming it at this point. I'm just gonna hit the start button and see if this thing starts going. Hear the fan, the fan going. Oh, fuel pumps kicked on. Yep, there we go. to say it does sound quieter with the uh, the muffler on and the case closed it's definitely a little bit quieter no doubt okay I'm gonna ramp up the heat again just to try to burn off any residual uh, oils on this muffler it's still smoking a little bit so we'll ramp up the heat see if we can get these things burned off
Okay, well, it's been about uh, 10, 12 minutes now, and it's still smoking the exhaust on the, the exhaust tube on this thing. So I'm just going to let it keep running, try to get all these oils burned out of this thing uh, so it runs uh, clean. Well, literally a few minutes after uh, turning off the video, uh, it's, it's burning clean now. No smoke coming out of the exhaust, so a total of maybe... 25 minutes uh, to expect uh, oils and, and smoke to come off of the, uh, the exhaust manifold. Um, the unit itself, as you saw in startup, burned with smoke for only a few minutes, but uh, for whatever reason, that exhaust manifold um, definitely has some oils in it. So right now it's burning absolutely clean, looks great. Unit's been running great now for a good 20 minutes, and uh, yeah. I'm impressed. Still some very hot air. And this is on setting three. I think I'll set it down to setting one and just see what that looks like uh, now that the smoke's burned off and uh, see if, because uh, I think you want to really, the idea is to conserve as much of that diesel fuel as possible. So we'll set it down to setting one, see what it seems like, and we'll go from there. Okay, on setting one, you have nice warm air. I would say that that's all you're going to need uh, all night long in your tent. Very nice. All right, well, I'd say it's a pretty successful test. I'm impressed. Uh, this is by no means an overall review of how this will hold up over time. This is just an initial, initial startup and impressions um, of this X Venture um, kit. Um, like I said before, you know, I'd be careful on the priming process. Only prime it until you see the fuel get in the fuel filter and maybe a little bit beyond the fuel filter. After that, let it power on and, and you know, start itself up. Don't over prime the system. Um, I would start it up without that muffler on to start. I would definitely set this up outside, preferably. It's raining today, so I'm on the edge of my garage here, which I guess is okay as well. But you know, you want to be somewhere as well ventilated because it will be smoky to start up. I would start it up without the muffler. Make sure everything, you kind of got it going first. Um, then put the muffler on. This is very hot. I can tell you for, uh, from personal experience, do not touch this with your bare hands after it's on there. Uh, it's extremely hot. Um, but this has been blowing hot air for over an hour now. Um, like I said, I will have a link to a AC to DC converter that has more than uh, well, 10 amps. I'll have 15 amps, I believe. Um, this thing, in my opinion, is drawing around 12 amps at startup. And on this lithium cube, it was not allowing it to, to go past 10 because that was the limit on the, uh, the port for the, the 12 volt connection. So, Okay, um, this is the third day of trying to get this thing set up into my tent. Uh, first day is really just uh, opening the box, getting it set up. Um, second day was getting it running, uh, getting all the exhaust gases worked out. Today I'd like to get it up in my tent, see um, how much how warm we can get it. It is a fairly chilly today. Today I'd say it's high 40s here in um, cool California where I am. Um, one thing I did want to wait for for a few days was this to arrive, and this is a AC to DC converter. Um, but this goes up to 15 amps, and if you remember my discussion earlier, this thing is um, shutting down at 10 amps maximum. <clears throat> I can't vault Wagon Tech for that because that's their stated rated maximum for their 12 volt plug. Um, hoping this should work. It's a lot simpler and a lot um, cleaner than the, the uh, AC to DC converter I had previously for my ham radio setup. And uh, so my plan today is to make sure this is working. This is only 30 bucks off Amazon. Um, and get it set up and running and then I want to do a temperature difference between the outside air temperature right now and uh, the tent. So I'm going to be pulling up my Jeep here next to this setup, uh, running this into the tent and we'll see how this goes. Okay, so we have this now uh, set up. Uh, this is plugged in with the AC to DC converter. Um, this controller here. I can already see that there's a, it's been a few days, but there's still fuel in the fuel line. So I'm not going to even try priming it at this point. Just going to hit the power button and um, see if this thing turns on.
And there it goes. Okay, so the key will be, as this thing works its way up in amperage, um, is the AC to DC converter doing what it needs to do. So we'll find out here, it's at 131 amps, or watts, I'm sorry, it's at 131 watts. It's out of the way. Hundred and thirty four watts. Yeah, it seems to be uh, working. It, it's highest I saw was 138 watts, which is close to what it was before. That's definitely more than 10 uh, amps. And um, so this AC-DC converter seems to be working good. Okay, I'm gonna shut off the video here and then I'll come back. Uh, let's see, I guess when, um, when I'm set up in the tent. I'm gonna close up the box uh, and uh, pull up my Jeep and get it set up in the tent. Got it plumbed into the tent right now. That's the outside uh, temperature gauge right there. And we will compare it to the inside. Probably about, I'll give it about 30 minutes here. Okay, so you can see the setup here, the unit's closed up and I have the vent going up into the tent. I just have the zipper, you know, closed up around it. I did lose audio on this section, so I'm just doing a quick voice over here, guys. Um, and so climbed up the tent, uh, grabbed the zipper, opened it up. Uh, all the windows are closed in the tent. It's been about 30 minutes and I'm measuring both the outside and inside air temperature. And you can see we're almost at 70 degrees versus 48 degrees outside. And um, yeah, quite a big difference. Very warm inside the tent as I opened the tent door. So um, I can pretty confidently say this is only on setting one and you have uh, four more settings above this in terms of increased heat levels uh, that you would be very, very warm at night in this tent and probably could leave it on setting one all night. Getting close to wrapping up here, guys. One of the things I realized is all the stuff that comes with these kits, you're really not gonna wanna try and stuff them back into this case. You have too much potential to damage something, especially the fuel lines. So what I got here is uh, a work pro bag. I think this is this is their 16 inch version. But what's nice about this it holds everything that came with the kit, the hose, the muffler, wiring harness, and the controller. And uh, remote and the splitter. And if you need the um, the clips for a battery, a regular battery, but that holds uh, everything. So that's my suggestion versus trying to stuff everything back into a case like this where you have a real potential to damage um, the fuel line in there. So these bags are great for that. All right, guys, so we're at the end of the video. Thanks for uh, following along and uh, sticking with me to this point. Um, in summary, this X Ventures uh, heater is really nice. I, I like it, it's very compact. It seems to be well made, well put together. It is a uh, American made product um, put together here in America. So uh, I do like that. Um, the lithium cube, you know, as we've seen, has that 10 amp maximum on its uh, 12 volt outlet here. Um, can't blame uh, Wagon Tech for that. It's, uh, it just is what it is. If they have a 10 amp maximum and this is drawing 12 amps at startup, then you're gonna need something like this uh, converter here, this AC to DC converter where the outlet goes up to 15 amps. And that's actually working great. It's only 30 bucks. Not a big deal considering the few times I'll probably be using a diesel heater to pull this along with me. Um, uh, but it is my understanding talking to Wagon Tech that they uh, probably, future versions of this, if they don't already, will be probably able to handle a little higher amperage 
Um, this is probably one of the very first uh, Wagon Tech lithium cubes to come out. Um, so um, sounds like they may be making adjustments there. And speaking of that, I'd like to know from you guys if anyone has a Blue Eddy or an EcoFlow or Goal Zero, um, have you had any issues similar to this? I know with the Jackeries, I haven't seen anybody that really has had this issue, even with Jackeries uh, down to 240 watt hours, have been able to start up diesel heaters. Um, so obviously Jackery has a little bit more of a fudge factor on their 12 volt outlets, which is great. Um, but I'm just curious, uh, even if you have had a Jackery, have you had that issue or not? Um, but more importantly, I'm curious if other people with Wagon Techs, with uh, Goal Zeros, Blue Eddies, Ecoflows, the similar types of external batteries, have you had any issues um, starting up um, your, your diesel heaters? And uh, if so, was it above the rated maximum of your particular external battery or power bank? So that's where we're at today. I hope this was somewhat helpful. I can't imagine I'm going to be the only one that has this issue with the, uh, the uh, amperage requirements on the diesel heater startup. So I thought it would be helpful for some people that may run across this similar issue um, to find a solution. And I think this is a pretty easy, cheap solution. Um, to get past the, uh, the startup. So, okay guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for following along. As always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and hope to see you on the trail someday.